Thank you for joining us. Today, we are continuing our conversation with Maya and Aladino on their sailing magic carpet adventure. I was thinking we, we, we should talk also about um, the pros and cons of 12 versus 24. Mm -hmm. um, do you wanna maybe give it a, a describe where your head's at, uh, both of you in terms of 12 versus 24 sure. volts? Well, to put it simply, um, we know that 24 volt devices would run more efficiently and that we could have wire size, which is a reduction in both cost and weight uh, and maybe a little bit of installation headache, uh, but that one's tiny. I like that. <laughs> so, so those being the two major things makes one think, well, 24, um, no doubt about it. But on the other side, I am not quite sure it is worth it for the size boat that we have. It still is a relatively small boat and we don't have that many devices. So speak, not that long cable runs. Uh, what I can see instantly is for example, the windlass, it's all the way up forward. Um, I'm leaning towards 12 volts just because of boat size, it not being necessary and our boat not being too complicated with too many devices. Uh, but yeah, maybe I'm missing something in the in the entire picture of where- uh, Maya, what's your thought on that? Your, you I'm on the exact same thing? page here, leaning towards 12 volt, but also don't feel like I understand enough to totally make that decision. What, one thing that I thought could be interesting from 24 volt standard uh, standpoint is charging. Um, for example, our alternators, I know there is 24 volt alternators that do an incredible output, which if you then compare it to 12 volts, it is a higher output. Yeah. And the same with uh, AC chargers. Um, I mean, a, hem an, a 100 amp hour 24 volt charger is double than 100 amp 12 volt charger. So that's what I find appealing, but I don't know if I want to go that route just because of that. Yeah, so you're absolutely right. So <coughs> generally um, your summary is good. Um, yeah, so why would anyone need 12 to go to 24? Or why would you use something 24 volts versus 12? Um, as you double the voltage, you half the average. So all your cables sizes, can be reduced by a factor of two, right? Um, so the cable sizing is dramatic, right? So you're literally halving the average. So that's significant. And that's definitely a driving factor, right? So you're cabling for your windlass. You know, if you've got a 1200 watt windlass or 1500 watt windlass, well, you know, the current you're gonna see at 12 volts versus 24 is gonna be literally a factor of two between the two. So that would be a really good way to have voltage. The effects of voltage drop are going to be minimized. They're still there, but they're going to be not as um, high as on a 12 volt system. You know, inverters, alternators, um, that all makes sense. But where it gets complicated, and this is where it gets complicated, and you're right, because um, is not all things are at... 24 volts. So not all charging sources can be 24 volts and not all um, loads can be at 24 volts. So the dilemma of going to uh, 24 is that you might have to um, have uh, a DC to DC sort of converter to run your 12 volt loads from your 24 volt loads. Now, that's not too complicated. You know, again, Victron makes some good products, Numar as well. We've done that. You generally see that at around 55, 60, 65 feet. You know, they're going to have certain loads that are 12 volts um, and they're going to have everything at 24. I, and you're right. And it's tempting to do that. Although very few 36 foot sailboats, whatever have a 24 volt boat. Because where it gets complicated is what about your engine? Are you gonna have a 24 volt starter? And are you gonna have a 24 volt battery bank to start your engine? And are you gonna have a 24 volt alternator? Or are you gonna do a 12 volt alternator with a 12 volt starter 
So now you have two systems on board. You've got a 12 volt for your engine, and then you would have to install potentially either a secondary, um, uh, if you want, secondary alternator to go direct, or you would simply have DC to DC charging converters that go from 12 to 24. And that's fine too. Um, so that's another way. Oh, so, so you, you could- 12 to 24? Yeah. Oh, okay, there's that too. Yeah, and that's a big thing. We, I, it's funny, this morning I had a, um, I was doing some comments on YouTube and there was a bunch of owners that were talking about that, uh, boaters. So that would be one option, right? Um, it's on the table. You could go leave your charging circuit at 12. Now, the problem with that is there's no redundancy from your 12 engine system to your 24 volt system. So that's where, you know, now you're having two battery banks, but there are two different levels, right? There's one at 24, one at 12, and you can't use one or the other, right? So that's where if you're going to have redundancy off the of lithium, maybe you would have redundancy off, maybe, maybe you have two AGM batteries that are connected in series that are 12 volts. And you have a small little house battery bank as an emergency, sort of like something ever happens on your house, you can fall back on your uh, standby AGM battery bank, right? You could do that. That's one option. Certainly a lot of people are doing that. I've seen that with lithium. Some people are doing that when they're connected to shore power. They'll have, um, they'll disconnect their lithium in a partial state of discharge and they'll run their boat at the dock or their dock loads outside of the engine are going to be powered off their AGM battery uh, when they're connected to shore power and they're leaving their boat unattended for periods of time. So that's another consideration. But then the, the issue is, you know, are you going to be able to source everything you need in 24 volts? Now, the good advantage you have is you can do that research and you could buy all your equipment, your, you know, your, Windless could be 24 volts. Uh, your inverter can be 24 volts. Your solar controllers can be 24 volts. Everything on your boat, you know, your water pump, you know, you probably can find, you know, you'll probably be able to find uh, a lot of devices that can run 24. And if they don't, then what you could do, and we do that a lot, is you could run those devices off of your 24 by having it converted again, right? So I was, there's a comment on YouTube this morning. There's a boater. He's running his whole boat at 48, inverter, mm -hmm. everything. And his 12-volt loads are simply run via uh, converters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, the other thought of why I was leaning away from 24 is exactly we can supply all the items now, but what if we need to replace them in some exotic locations? Then it gets harder. It and is. also redundancy and uh, out of redundancy if we were to lose one battery then we're back to 12 volts um, kind of that thought uh, that you need double to maintain a 24 volt battery yeah. so to speak yeah yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so i mean to be honest that's why you would never i mean i don't think i've ever seen a 36 foot boat with 24 volt and i don't think i would do it on my boat i can tell you the reasons why but i think the the real main reason why people do 24 is to reduce cabling size and to reduce the effects of voltage drop uh, on far away places. You know, your battery bank is unlikely going to be at the one end of the boat or the other, right? You know, it's generally always a little bit uh, aft of midship on many sailboats or midship. The benefits that you're going to get from a 24 system, but also then all the issues associated with it, you're right. Um, it's worth considering. Um, and certainly for an alternator, it would help, right, to have half the current go through, right? Um, that's, that's definitely an advantage. The inverter, again, half the current, half the cable sizes, but those devices are not going to be that far. And I don't think your alternator, uh, it can be that huge because it's really going to be a function of your size of your engine you, you can't choose any alternator you want you know there's there's going to be some limitations with your engine that you have and that's that's going to be a factor realistically that's going to limit all the benefits of going with a 24 volt system unless you were getting an engine that could accommodate any size alternator including a massive you know let's say 100 and 300 amp or 
150 amps at 24 volt alternator, right? Not everyone can fit that on their engines. Totally. Yeah. So, yeah. So we see all the benefits, but yeah, it's more out of simplicity there as well. That yeah. The 12. Yeah. 12. I mean, I'm not saying the decision is final and you can all, all of this is sort of, you're going to all sleep on it, but the 99% of people would be faced that question or 95, I would say, and 95% would probably choose 12. Yeah. At your boat size, mm -hmm. at your boat size. Now, if you had a 60 footer, completely different. And I would strongly suggest to go to 24. Like I would be, I would be fighting really hard <laughs> yeah. uh, for you to consider, you know, a 60, 65 foot boat. I'd be pushing really hard for 24, especially if you're running winches that are electric, you're running all this, you know, hydraulics or battery, th you know, bow thrusters, you know, like thr aft thrusters, some sailboats, big sailboats have aft thrusters, four thrusters, right? Like now that's starting to be a completely different world. And then it would make sense to look at 24. Just out of curiosity, like a lot of cruising boats nowadays are around the 45 foot range. Like what would you start recommending for that size? Still probably they're on the fence, but most people for simplicity would stick at 12, even, even 45. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if we'd had to all be done again, of course, if we could all start from scratch, every boat should be 24. Yeah. And if everyone was using 24, we'd all be happier. But the problem is you don't do what you want. You always have to consider, and I think I would do is, is that, you know, it's easy in a big home port where some of us are lucky, where our home ports are, you know, huge sort of maybe what I consider these, you know, marine centers, right? Like Florida, all these places and the Med here in the Pacific Northwest, uh, Puget Sound here in British Columbia. There's enough of boaters here that there's enough businesses that support boaters that it's easier to find what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. But once you leave these big centers, totally. You know, and even if you're even in the Caribbean, even accessing that, they might not have it on the shelf. They have to bring it in. Yeah. It just then gets very cost prohibitive if it's not a readily available part. And if it's a special order part, it's even worse because as we've seen, sometimes you could be waiting six months for a part, 12 months. Right. And on that same note, if we would start from scratch, then we would probably make AC 240 volts and we would use metric and not imperial, wouldn't we? <laughs> yeah, exactly. There would be no imperial. That's right. And although I think only an imperial mostly because I just have to, uh, you're right. It's, it's, we don't do what we want. We do, we have to be relatable, right, to others. Mm -hmm. So if everyone talks in imperial and a lot of my clients speak that way or think that way, then I'm adapting, right? And yeah. so I think the same thing with your boat. You, we don't do what we want. We do what we should do based on the environment around us. Mm -hmm. exactly. So, yeah, 